Okay, so to finish out this series of the denim in substance painter, the last thing I want to show you guys is how to make these rips and holes in the garment so it looks like it's got, um, you know, ripped or distressed areas in it. Um, this is really easy to set up um, as a brush inside substance painter, but we need some, um, some material to work with. So I'm going to set all of this up in Photoshop. So I'm just going to jump over to Photoshop where I've got this um, denim image ready to go. So the main things I'm going to work with um, to create this are going to be the the um, object selection tool here. I need the paint bucket as well. So if you've got a gradient set here, make sure that you select your paint bucket. And we're going to create some um, additional black and white layers around this as well. So the first thing we want is to make sure we're working with a square composition and not a uh, rectangle in any way. So I'm just going to go to crop. I've set my crop to square. And I'm just going to drag this out to give myself some more space around this, this distressed area. Okay. Um, I want to just cut out this, this area. I don't need all the denim in the back. And the easiest way to do this is to use the object select tool. So object selection up here, um, select this and then just click simply on the denim or on the, the thing that we want to select. And I am going to press on my keyboard control shift and I to invert the selection. You can do that as well by going to selection and choosing inverse control shift. I is the, the shortcut here and that will just flip what's selected. Um, so with that done, I'm going to press control and X to delete this. And now I'm just left with my worn out denim hole. Basically, I'm going to press plus down here to add a new layer. And I'm going to drag this layer to the bottom to set it as a background. And I'm just going to press G on the keyboard to activate my paint bucket tool and I'm just going to fill in the background as white. So now we have a basically the base color that we can work with for this brush. Um, but we also need an alpha, we need a normal map and we need some additional things to work with. So um, the first thing we're going to do is create the alpha and we need a black background for the alpha. So I'm just going to click plus to add a new layer. I'm going to go over here and switch my color palette from white and black to black and white. So I can press X on the keyboard as a shortcut to flip this over and then just fill the background layer in black. The alpha, I want to be this inside internal shape and just have this as white. Um, so the easiest way to do that will be to again, add a new layer, um, fill this layer in white so we can create another white layer on top of this. And I'm just going to select, um, again, this shape. So if I select this, um, do the invert selection again. So control shift and I, so I'm selecting the background and then on this, this top white layer here, I'm just going to press control and X. And if I turn off the visibility of the top, um, the base color, we'll see now that we have the alpha that we can use for our brush. So I've just got a black and white stencil, basically like a, a stamp. And the white area will be what is used as our brush inside Substance Painter and the black area will not be used as the brush. So this is this is how we're going to uh, create the, the brush tool. Um, so I can simply export this now as an alpha. So I'm going to put this in my folder over here. I'm going to create a new folder called brush two because I've already made one brush over here. And it's going to be this folder that I'm going to um, export this, uh, this to. So I'm going to go to file export quick export as png and then let's go to that folder and we'll call this uh brush to actually now let's call it denim rip to alpha save that and then we can now save as well our base color and i'm going to save the base color on a white background so i'll go to file um, I'm just turning on the visibility of these layers as I go. I'm keeping everything just stacked up and just turning on and off what I don't need. So I'm turning on the base color here with the white background and let's go to file, export, quick exports PNG and we'll call this denim rip. And instead of alpha, we'll call it base color. Right, save that. Then we are going to want to create um, a normal map for this. So I want to create a copy of this, um, this base color in the top. So I'm going to right click here and click duplicate layers and then just click okay to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to merge this layer with my white background layer. So I'm just going to 
press control to select both these layers and right click and click merge layers. So now my white background is kind of combined onto my, uh, my base image here. And I'm just going to go to filter 3D and generate normal Mac. And this will bring up a 3D editing window that we can look at to create the normal Mac. So this is what we're going to see when we're looking for the normal Mac. Um, I'm going to turn off invert details because I want this to be looking like it's kind of pushed up a bit. Um, and for now, the detail scale and the blur, I'm just going to leave as it is. And I'm going to click OK. Then let's go to file, export, quick export as PNG, call this denim riff and then rename it to normal. And then click save. Um, we want to do the same again for a bump map. So I'm just going to simply just undo this normal map generation and then go back and go filter 3D. Let's create a bump map. Same 3D window is going to come up. Um, and yeah, I think this is fine. So let's just click OK. And then file, export, quick export, and do it as bump. The last thing we want to generate is an opacity map. And that will have, um, if I zoom in on this, there's there's like holes between these threads. So we want to pick these holes out. We're just going to cut these out and create a, um, create a opacity map that's going on top of this. So for the opacity map, we're going to have a white background. Let's start off with that. So press new layer down here, press D and let's fill this in as a white background. And I'll just place it underneath this one. And I simply think I'm just going to draw this out quite quickly and I'm going to use the um, polygon lasso, lasso tool right here. So I'm just going to click in these spaces where there's like a big um, gap in the threads and then just hold shift to select the next one and just run through and like select some of these gaps. So I will jump back in a second when this is all selected, but this is quite easy to do if you just hold the shift key down. Okay, so I've selected some of these areas and I'm just on a new layer, I wanna fill these in black so that these become um, uh, transparent in our brush. So I'm gonna add a new layer. This is going on top of my white layer. I'm gonna switch my fill option back to black and just go back to the paint bucket tool and just fill these guys in black. Um, I need this layer on top and now I have these black um, black holes and these will become the transparent areas and the white will be will remain opaque. What we could even do if I make a copy of this again, I duplicate this background, this base image. I'm going to press Control, Shift and U to desaturate it. And I'm going to press Control and L to look at the levels of this. And maybe we can pick out even some more little black areas in between. So let's push this down and push this right up. And just play with this gray value a little bit. And now we can pick out some, you know, little uh, additional areas between these threads. I'm going to press OK and then just use the eraser tool. So just this eraser over here, reduce the size of it and just erase all these uh, other edges because I don't want these to have opacity. I want these to be visible still. So let's just erase this. And now all these little black areas will be um, transparent in Substance Painter. So let's um, go again, file, Export, quick export as PNG, oh, and call this opacity, right, save. And then I'm just going to save this Photoshop file as well and call this brush2, actually, what happened there, brush2, and save this, okay. That's saved. Let's go back to Substance Painter. And basically what I've got here is these 
rips from before are just on one pane layer here, so I can turn this off for a second. And then we can import some new uh, rips, okay? So what we want to do is navigate to the place where we saved everything. So these are all the things I exported here, the alpha, the base color, the bump map, the normal map, and the opacity. Grab these and just drag them into our shelf on the side, into the assets here. And set your alpha to alpha and then set these guys underneath all to texture when you import them um, so that Substance Painter knows to read this thing as an alpha and you can import them ideally to your library so you can use them in other projects or you can just put them in this project if you don't need it to use it anywhere else and then just click import and these are our image textures here that we can now use to set up this brush so I'm going to add a folder and then in the folder I'm going to add a paint layer and we can now use this um, properties on the side to, to build up this material so we want this to have a color we want it to have a height we want it to have a normal and we want it to have an opacity and we want to you instead of having this alpha here we want to insert the one uh, that we just imported so click the alpha up here and just by clicking it it will set this to our be our brush now so you see, if I zoom in, the shape of our brush is now the outline shape of our ripped hole. And we want to now import these image textures into these slots right here. So let's just drag the base color over. We can drag the height over the normal map and the opacity map. And then if I choose a place to start to paint this, I want to increase my brush size a little bit. And then if I simply just click, I will now get my um, my ripped area and the thing you'll see is I can like see through the back of this fabric now because of the opacity map that's working as well so this is really easy to set up what you might notice though is that this looks a bit bright compared to the rest of the denim and that's why I put this in a um, folder the first thing we can look at is if I look at the uh, the bump map here the normal and height I've still got the grain of this denim underneath the grain. Like these normal maps are all being blended together. And really I want just this normal map to be turned off underneath this stamp. So if you can still see a normal map underneath, go to your folder option here and under the normal options, just turn this to normal. Um, on your bit, this is not the right uh, channel that I'm affecting now. So this is set to base color. I need to go to normal and change this from nmdt to normal so now this is set to normal and if you see i'm not getting the normal map underneath i can go i can undo that and you'll see this has the grain underneath and this does not have the grain underneath and that can be the same as well for the height map so if you've got height information coming through you can turn this from linear dodge to normal in the blending options and this will now um, change how visible this is I think the height of this is way too strong. That's why this normal map is looking really like over, over contrasted. So I'm just going to reduce the height a bit over here like this. Just drop that down a little bit and then go back into material view and we can just adjust a little bit the color of this now. So with this folder selected where we've got our rips, I can just name this rip or rips one a few. And then we're going to add a levels. And for the base color, we can just drag this um, on the bottom side. We've got two sliders, the, the white side on the, the right side. If we slide this over, our image will become a bit darker and a bit more kind of dirtier looking like the rest of the denim. And um, if we want to change the blue color at all, we could go back here, add a filter um, and look at using a gradient again to see if we can pick out a different color. So if our denim was like a, a purple denim, for example, we could choose a purple here and slide the channels around a little bit to make this feel like, um, you know, the, the right color that we need it. But for now, I don't need that gradient because I think this blue works okay. And we've now got a hole. So if I want more holes, I can just go back to this brush layer here, line up my brush and just click wherever I want these uh, so when you've got the rips like all placed on your uh, garment and everything's looking like you want it, maybe we just want one more here. Oh, apparently we don't. Okay, so this is this is good to go now. 
Um, we can now re-export this ready to use in Blender again. So I'm just going to go to File, Export Textures, and I'll go back to the um, the the place I exported this before. So the exact same directory that I exported this in last. So this is the the same directory that I used before. And if I just export this again exactly as it is. Um, it will overwrite everything and I don't need to import everything back into Blender. So let's use the same directory here and then just click export again. And then this will all get overwritten. So you'll see now these are all just going to get updated with the ripped holes, you know, where I've added them. So this will be automatically updated back in Blender when we get there. So this is now done. Let's click save settings and then we can save our substance file. And then let's jump into Blender and look at updating these uh, textures. So here's the Blender scene we set up before. And these are all the image textures that were loaded in last time. And because this directory is all the same as it has been, and our rips are now visibly updated on these image textures, um, if we just reload these images, our um, texture should be completely updated without us needing to do anything at all, we hope. Yeah, so now this has got the rips in look, and this is looking great. Let's just do out of the camera view for a second. So now we've got our ripped holes in this denim. Um, we can see through, there's opacity between all these threads, which is great. Um, this is looking like a really nice texture and the camera's all set up from how we had things before. So that was the little extra bit on how you guys can create um, ripped holes, worn out details, um, look through the fabric, you know, if there's, if we need to work with opacity or anything. Um, and this denim texture is now finished. So I'm interested to see what you guys can come up with using these techniques.